Shall we start? Yes, madam. Let us start. Good evening, everyone. I, Dr. Akanksha Kamar, Assistant Professor, Community Medicine in Netaji Subhash and Boss Medical College, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. On behalf of my PG co seminar coordinating team, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you for today's session. Moving ahead in the PG seminar series of IAPSM eConnect, we are here yet another, with yet another listing topic, One Health, an approach for global health security by addressing the human, animal, and the environment interface. Perhaps going through today's presentation, we will be able, we will be able to appreciate it as a need of the hour. I am honored to be here as a moderator for the session. And we are really fortunate to have with us Dr. Pranav Chatterjee sir as a facilitator with the substantial experience in the field of One Health. Sir is currently the graduate research associate, associate from John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Sir, we would like to have a few words from you. Hi, everybody. Um, it's a really um, great topic to talk about. Um, COVID-19 has brought us closer to concepts about zoonotic diseases and um, One Health has become a less unknown term to all of us. Um, I worked with Dr. Saurav Parida and Dr. Sital Dalai over the last few weeks um, and it has been a great pleasure being able to work with you. I hope you um, have a lot of fun with the presentation and um, all right, best of luck and over to you. Thank you. So let me introduce you with our presenters for the session. Dr. Sheetal Delai and Dr. Saurav Parida, both junior residents, third year, from Maharaja Prashnachandra Gajapati Medical College, Barhampur, Ubisa. So without wasting much of your time, I would like to invite Dr. Sheetal Dalai from, for starting the session. And Dr. Saurabh will take later on. So Sheetal, can you please share your slide? Yes, ma'am, I am sharing it. Ma'am, is the slide uh, visible? Yes. So, uh, thank you, uh, ma'am, uh, for the introduction and thank you, Pranav sir, for the help. Uh, so, uh, today, before starting our topic proper, let's hear a story. The elephant in the dark. As you can see in the photo, a group of blind people, uh, they are trying to figure out how the elephant is like by touching it. So while one is at its leg, you can see the another, any, another one is at its trunk and others likewise are touching different parts of the elephant. The one who touching the leg, it says the elephant is just like a pillar and the one at the ear, he says it's just like a big hand pen. The tail one says is just like a rope and the one touching its st stomach, he argues, no, no, it's just like a wall. So their description of the elephant, it differs from each other point of telling this story today is we are going to um, talk on one health this topic is a is so vast to be covered only in 20 minutes so we will discuss a little bit from various perspectives then in the end let's see if we could figure out what it is really like this elephant with that in mind we'll go into the topic proper first we are going to introduce you to the idea of one health then we will look at One Health in action, how it has been applied in the real world settings. Then uh, we will go to health implement, One Health implementation, particularly in India, and try to summarize all of this in a few points in the end. So in view of the current COVID pandemic and impending monkeypox outbreak now, we will start with the emerging and re-emerging infectious disease. Coming to the definition, as per WHO, the emerging infectious disease is one that has either appeared and affected the population for the first time, like COVID-19, 
or it has existed previously but is rapidly spreading now either in terms of the number of people getting infected or to the new geographical areas like the zoonosis our ever changing influenza monkeypox rabies anthrax all these and many more so why is this happening the reason of this can be attributed to global changes like climate change globalization of movements of products and people intensified animal and plant production to meet the increasing demand and antibiotic resistance like mdr tb xdr tb mrsa so in view of these emerging and reemerging diseases of various origins this concept of one health is gaining more and more importance now then coming to the definition of one health it's defined as a collaborative multi sectoral and transdisciplinary approach working at local regional national and global level with the goal of achieving optimum health outcome that recognizes the interconnection between people animal plants and their shared environment for better understanding of it let's get into some similar concepts like planetary health and all you know in the past it was typical to see health only from an individualistic perspective as a person's of uh, person's absence of these only then with the development of public health health became a collective notion to stop the disease transmission similar to this the broader concept of global health it acknowledges that socio economic factors play important predictor for health outcome then coming uh, to one health as you uh, discussed previously the well being of people domesticated animals other living things are all connected next planetary health on the other hand it acknowledges the health of the globe is a single system and its non living uh, beings are also they also play a major role in the disease causation for instance we take um, the carbon dioxide level in air from 1990s uh, 1950s it has increased by around 24% in 2016 it was the warmest year on earth in 2018 it was the warmest year for the oceans the sea water that has increased uh, in acid, increase acidity in the sea water uh, by 30% since the industrial revolution there is also a concept of uh, eco health uh, it focuses on the relation between health and ecosystem now uh, the term eco, um, one health and planetary health these are used synonymously because uh, definition of one health has been updated to include environment as its third component in addition to human and animal health now if we look back at all these approaches to the holistic life how did you come around all these concepts so let's get a bit into the history part although one health is a fairly new term used uh, is being used the idea has long been there by the scientific uh, they have uh, the scientific community has have accepted it because they have been observing the similarities in the disease process between animals and humans since a, a long ago dr bichau as you can see he was a german pathologist he became interested in the linkage between human and veterinary medicine while studying uh, on roundworm in swine population during the time he coined the term zoonosis dr osler who was a canadian physician he publishes ideas related to this in his uh, book the relation of animals to men coming to 20th century uh, the term one medicine it was coined by dr swave in his textbook veterinary medicine and human health then skipping to 2004 the wildlife conservation society it brought together a group of human and animal health experts for the one health event one world one health event there they set 12 priorities known as the manhattan principles at least 12 recommendations for establishing a more holistic approach to prevent the epidemic or epigenetic disease and to maintain the ecosystem integrity then in 2012 the world medication medical association and world veterinary association they officiated the one health initiative since then one health agenda is active in many countries few examples of which we will cover subsequently now coming to the indian perspective 
we know one health has been an integral part of our traditional medicine like ayurveda so in uh, 21st century realizing the importance of zoonosis the national standing committee on zoonosis it was formed on uh, 2007 then after 3 years in 2010 national institute for zoonosis at uh, nagpur it was established then in last decade in march 2019 the center for one health under the national institute of virology pune was established under which the two research project uh, funded from um, by icmr and icr they were approved as a first step towards the institute ex- institute's activities so our first one health consortium of then it was launched recently by department department of biotechnology in october 20- 2021 followed by celebration of international one health day in november with the theme of industry and one health so this was a brief snapshot into the past of one health now let's get into some one health concept in action here we will discuss um, under the three broad domains of one health those are animal health human health environmental health and along with this we will cover the antimicrobial resistance and food safety is the increased demand for food has already sustained already strained our um, natural resources resulting in soil erosion uh, loss of biodiversity and pollution of the environment all around the world now it is presenting as a new challenge in food safety and sustainable food production so along with it we will also cover amr that is antimicrobial resistance given its numerous interactions linking the human animal and environment now let's start with the animal health you know in 1998 there were a lot of sea otters they were dying around the west coast of us uh, they conducted a thorough investigation and discovered toxoplasma gondii in each of the dead otters then the question arises as to how an aquatic sea animal was getting infected by a parasite in cat feces you know then again why are sea otters important to us why are we discussing about them in a public health forum well as the sea otters reside near the coastal area so to speak we share their meal you know most of our seafood from uh, comes from that area only if they are um, eating they are dying by eating something then we are not far off also we know for a fact that toxo is deadly to immunocompromised people and it causes fetal malformation lastly uh otters the sea otters they keep check on the sea urchin population by feeding on them um that in turn it maintains the coastal biodiversity from getting destroyed as you can see from these pictures on further investigation the missing link in the land to sea connection it was found to be the sea water outflow carrying the oocyst in cat feces so the cat feces with toxo Uh, it was being uh, carried into ocean by the fresh water runoff then it accidentally ingested by the sea snails uh, and got concentrated in their body those sea snails uh, they were subsequently preyed upon by the sea otters uh, closing the loop of infection transmission then do we have an environmental angle to consider here yes uh, on later research they revealed that uh, unfiltered contaminated water from the land entered the ocean because of the increased land use and the wetland degradation so what this incident tells it serves as an example of a chain of disease transmission connecting human animal and their sea environment here we see the chain of disease transmission in different stages of zoonosis from the pre emergence to the far end of pandemic as we are familiar with the transmission of covid-19 from bat to human through an uncertain link if the disease it could have been stopped at the level of bats or animals by timely reporting tests and required intervention then we could have prevented the spill over let's say the spill over occurred if the disease crossed the spill over and emerge then we need to be prepared to handle the local transmission to curb it at or below the epidemic level only now let's get into another part of the one 
Africa. Along the west coast of Africa, Senegal is the country where cystosomiasis, it has been endemic since uh, late 90s. We know the life cycle of cystosomiasis is, it involves humans along with plants, aquatic animals, and our concerned environment. Initially, they tried to distribute praziquantel to the patients as a method of treatment, and they got cured, but reinfection occurred again and again. So to tackle the endemicity, those scientists, they try to understand how the social, ecological, economic, and health access factors, they, are, uh, they have been affecting the disease transmission. Then with uh, One Health approach, they did some investigation of the previous records and found that the disease rates, they have increased over uh, since the Senegal River Dam was built in 1986. So now the dam, the, the, that dam, it affected the life cycle of a native river prawn. The prawn uh, hindering its essential migration to the brackish water near the Atlantic Ocean. So what happened is the local extinction of prawns led to an upstream, uh, upstream explosion of the snail species. Those snails that serve as a reservoir for cystosomiasis. Uh, that's why it's also known as uh, snail fever. Recently, now they are considering the reintroduction of the native prawn species as, a, as an ecological intervention to complement the drug therapy of Prajiguntal. So this was an example of dams and disease where the One Health approach, it helped the authorities to arrive at an ecological solution to an infectious disease to humans. So with that, I will hand back over to Dr. Saurabh. Uh, he will uh, continue from environmental aspect onwards. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Sita. After the World Tour, let's get back to India. We are all familiar with the smog of the North India. In uh, 2019, India's average particular matter concentrate was 70.3 micrograms per cubic meter, the highest in the world. India saw over 23.5 lakh premature deaths due to air pollution in 2019. Majority were caused by the ambient air pollution that increased by 115.3% from 1990 to 2000, uh, 2019. Other deaths were due to the household air pollution, but now the household air pollution has decreased by 64.2%. Maybe since the introduction of Pradhan Mantri. Sorry. Maybe due to the introduction of Pradhan Mantri uh, Ujjala Yojana scheme that was launched in 2016. Death due to air pollution has resulted in $36.8 billion in total loss, which is Hello. You are audible, Saurabh. Just carry on. Thank you. Okay. Death due to air pollution has resulted in 36.8 billion total loss, which is about 1.36% of India's total GDP. So, how did you get here? The major source of air pollution. The major source of air pollution in India is from vehicular emission power generation, industrial waste, biomass combustion for cooking, and construction sector. Episodic event like crop burning uh, due to the uh, crop burning. Due to the history of growing rice and wheat one after another in the same region, there is now lack of underground water. Additionally, the burning of leftover stubble contributes to air pollution. So policy and money should be incentivized the farmer in the region to plant more fruit and, uh, fruits and vegetables. That requires less water, and there should, and uh, which left no stable to left, uh, no stable left to burn. Recently, recently, the national clean air program was launched in early 2019. However, it failed to enforce its target due to lack of appropriate monitoring and inspection elements. After the environment aspect, now we shall move to the next section of antimicrobials. Resistance. The past decade, the number of deaths caused by resistance strain has exceeded the num combined number of deaths caused by influenza, HIV, and road traffic accidents. Normally, antimicrobial resistance is spread by horizontal transmission through plasmids. And the non medical use of antibiotics in animal husbandry 
प्रॉब्लम and how complicated its interrelationship are previously evaporation was used in uh, the far for rapid uh, growth of the animal the meat produced in turn was has more protein than fat so it is a win in point of uh, win in situation for, from economic point of view but the use of antibiotic as feed additive led to evaporation resistance which has caused to lead to vancomycin The antibiotic that we use in humans. So in Denmark, Denmark is started, which stands for Danish Integrated Antimicrobial Resistance Monitoring and Research Program, which collected samples from all the lab uh, across the country to test the level of antimicrobial resistance. The strength of Denmark was that it both integrate and separate different factors in risk management. First, it integrated the stakeholder and the science. Collaboration between different professional and by sharing access uh, to the data and samples. Secondly, it separates the risk management from risk assessment. Scientists were assessing the risk while the authority were conducting the risk management. This survey is an excellent example of one health surveillance network. Subsequently, in 1995, Denmark has banned abortion as a growth promoter. As we can see from the graph. The resistance level in chickens, uh, chickens and pigs, reduced from 80% and uh, from 80% to 20% in 1995. To nil after just six uh, six years of ban. Legislative ch uh, changes follows thereafter for sustainability of the program, and veterinarians then took on the new responsibility of advising on how to improve animal health without the use of antibiotics. So. If Denmark could do it in 20th century itself, why not India? Let's see what India is doing now, implementing the One Health concept. The One Health pilot uh, project uh, is recent example. It was launched on 6 April of uh, 2022 in Uttarakhand, and another set was launched today in Karnataka, Bangalore. It was uh, it was launched by the Department of uh, Animal Husbandry and Dairy. In partnership with different ministries from human health, animal health, environment, climate change, along with ICAR and others, to develop a national one health framework by improving the quality, availability, and utility of data. This framework aims to improve the national and state resource allocation and policy ecosystem on early prediction, detection, and diagnosis of genetic illness. The key to achieve this is by standardizing the mechanism of data collection on disease outbreak, prevalence, and management. Like our existing IDSP, this is to monitor the disease trends. Development of target surveillance plan for specific area of concern, particular to the region like zoonosis, uh, pollution, or antimicrobial misuse. Integrating network of laboratory, as we saw in the case of Denmark. Developing and implementing com uh, communic uh, communication strategy across the sector, and integrating the data with the digital architecture of national digital livestock mission. As we have Ayushman Bharat digital mission for human health, we can go for it for animal too. Now let's discuss some pros and cons of our existing system that would aid or hinder in the implementation of uh, one. As mentioned in the definition, transdisciplinary approach is a strong in uh, is a strong involvement of civil society with uh, civil society society uh, stakeholder like uh, community uh, community along with different existing department in socio ecological approach of uh, approach to health. Coming to enablers, high level political winners as shown in pilot project started in the uh, Uttarakhand and Bangalore. Now, the One Health One Health uh, Support Unit would lead an agenda at the national level. Also, the uh, National Center for Disease Control 
is there to strengthen the capacity and surveillance across our country. Then there is a central and state fund can be allocated for the disease, uh, disease control and surveillance. For sustaining the good health of the uh, community, the people health should be put in the hand of the people. Mere generating awareness is not sufficient. So in the community engagement framework, the member of a community like farmer, forest type, rangers, animal, health worker, and uh, human health worker and other uh, animal health worker and others need to be involved in each and every process from field investigation to uh, formulation of new policy. Now, let's get into some challenges. Implementation of this approach uh, in India seems to be challenging due to relative limited practice, uh, practical guidance and understanding on how to foster and sustain cross-border collaboration. The various type of challenges are like, there is a limited policy visibility of genetic disease in India, conflicting department priority, limited uh, existing institutional capacity, now coming to some technical issues, insufficient resource and infrastructure. Like we have uh, only 73, uh, 73 lakhs bed as per uh, in India, in contrast to requirement of 1.2 lakhs in as per a report of 2014. Then comes to the uh, knowledge gap and the need for training and one health method. System for reporting and monitoring disease in the human and animal uh, health. Uh, the system of uh, re uh, reporting and monitoring diseases in human and animal differs vastly. Then coming to some other, then coming to some other uh, problem, the complex governance system of uh, for disease, the inadequate implementation of foreign policy, as we have discussed with the national clean air program, the presence of uh, regional and cultural differences. And the regional capacity gap are among the uh, all the factors that need to be considered. We did have a uh, different collaboration in the past, like due to the outbreak of influenza, or we can take the situation of current situation of COVID-19. Uh, COVID this collaboration only lasts as long as there is a threat, and it dissolves after the threat. So now we have got a bit brief idea about India's effort towards one health agenda. So now I will hand over, hand over it back to Dr. Sitar to close the session. Dr. Sitar. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shora. So in the end, to summarize, the four C's, the coordination, communication, collaboration, and capacity building. These are the cornerstones to achieve One Health. As you can see from this picture, for One Health to be operationalized, we need collaboration with sectors and within sectors. As we saw in cases from animal health to human health, AMR to environment and forestry all around, we need seamless integration of sectors. To achieve that, the sectors need to be able to communicate with each other by sharing data and intelligence. So the challenges can be addressed in time. For that to happen, we have to collaborate to enhance our investigation capacity. Then lastly, but not the least, is the capacity building. Not just in veterinarians or human health experts, but all across, like uh, starting from common people to our policymakers. Why? Because the issues we are talking about are faced by the common people directly. The farmers, they need to report to the authority in time when they see, uh, they notice any type of symptom in their farm, not just feed the available antibiotics. And we are, we also need to stop taking Azithral 500 for our own, you know. So likewise, the policy, at policymakers levels, we need to understand the ways of One Health to format legislation that is sustainable over a period of time, like we saw in Denmark. So if you uh, now remember this slide, uh, the first slide we talked about, you gave, uh, we gave you examples of sea otters from the far end of US to cystosomiasis of Africa, 
then the air pollution of India to Denmark's fight against AMR, COVID-19 in China. So after you can say the world tour, if you still think that uh, this topic was just like a pillar or rope and we left many things, then we have to look back again. But uh, however, if you have uh, realized by now that One Health is a multifaceted, multifactorial uh, problem that needs a complex transdisciplinary approach, then uh, you have seen the you have seen the elephant uh, in our opinion. So with that, we will uh, we have come to uh, the end of our session. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Shivel and Saurabh, uh, for this great presentation and I am really assured that it will give our listeners the, it, I am assured that it will give our listeners a different perspective to figure out the mammoth of One Health. Okay. Thanks once again. So, before uh, putting the session of uh, question and answer before our expert, I would like it to hear directly from Dr. Pradav sir to opine on the issue. Pradav sir. Sure. Um, great presentation, Sita and Saurav. Um, One Health, as uh, you've been discussing, is a lot about transdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity, which makes it important to be able to have um, the capacity to work across sectoral borders. Bring, that is one of the bigger um, practical challenges, but that is also one of the strengths of this approach. So understanding how everything connects and how the jigsaw pieces of the puzzle fit is a, a major part of solving the problem. Um, as we study uh, causality of diseases and um, risk factor analysis more clo closely, we realize that um, nothing happens in isolation and uh, these are really complex problems and issues that have multifactorial um, reasons and sources of um, risks. One Health is an approach, is a framework which helps us resolve some of the complexities by providing a uh, framework or a theoretical approach to define the domains within which these risks um, are operating. So like you um, pointed out, uh, there are four major players in the One Health world. Um, the human health sector, which is WHO, the animal health sector, which is World Organization for Animal Health, the uh, food sector, which is UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and the environmental sector, which is the U UNEP or United Nations Environmental Program. So um, congratulations on touching on all of these issues and telling us some interesting stories um, about One Health and how the world connects. So just one more thing. Um, we did discuss mostly infectious diseases, but the One Health framework, like um, Saurav was discussing, can also be extended to um, explain other conditions like um, non-communicable diseases associated with environmental risks, pollution, et cetera. And um, with that, I'll just hand it back to you, Dr. Akansha. So I have a few questions for you. May I? First of all, like uh, we have the perspective of uh, Dr. Saurav and Sheetal, but I would like to know, like if a community medicine PG wishes to learn more about the subject of One Health or the topic, so what are the learning opportunities or the resources available? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so one of the good resources is the One Health Commission website. It is, um, it is an independent um, website which collates a lot of information. Um, practical information may not be a lot of theoretical frameworks, etc. Another good source of information is the CDC's One Health Resources page. WHO has a very interesting um, resource page on, w, uh, on One Health as well. All the four One Health agencies, which are now called the quadripartite, have information about One Health. Um, there are some countries like Bangladesh that have launched national One Health policies. So um, that could be also of interest. And of course, um, something that we all do is read journals. Um, there's a lot of evidence right now being generated around One Health, the concept of One Health and the challenges or processes of implementing the One Health um, approach. Mm -hmm. So um, these are some of the um, areas that you can look at as a um, 
postgraduate trainee to learn more about One Health. But what you do need to realize is that um, as long as you're functioning within the bracket of human health only, your search will be incomplete. So as a One Health functionary or as an uh, One Health operative, you have to figure out a way to talk across sectors, to find your veterinarian friends, to find sociologists, to find environmental scientists who can talk to you about um, your problems and your interest areas. Thanks, sir, for the insight. My next question is, if someone uh, is interested in the research in this particular area, so what are the current research priorities and where we can start with? Okay, that's an excellent question again. and. A very difficult question to answer in a short time. Um, research priority setting is um, in itself a big uh, undertaking. There have been some One Health zoonotic disease research priority setting in India. One of this was done in 2016 um, by the Roadmap to Combat Zoonosis in India. And that actually outlines research questions that need to be explored. Um, we participated and sort of uh, helped with a study in South Africa doing the same work. It has also been recently published. Priorities keep changing as newer public health problems emerge. So what was a priority in 2016 may no longer be very important right now, especially in a post-pandemic world. So um, one thing that has caught the attention of the global, um, global health community is um, preventing pandemics or even being able to um, predict pandemics. There was this huge project called the Global Virome Project that was going on and they tried to map the virome, that is the um, circulating viruses in the environment between humans, animals, and uh, in, at the human, animal, and environment interface. But um, unfortunately, they were not able to um, call out COVID-19 in time. So, um, Priorities emerge, and the best way to sort of understand what's happening at the cutting edge is to stay up to date on the literature or um, find people like Sita Lansara who can advise us about what's going on and where the sea otters are dying or what's happening to schistosomiasis in Africa so that we can understand what's happening all around the world. Thank you so much, sir, for answering these two questions from uh, Dr. Parag Chavda, sir, and I think it has solved the queries of others too. A next question I would like to put is uh, by Dr. Shatabdi Mitra that can you please elaborate a bit about the concern of food safety, particularly in regard to One Health and Indian aspect? Yes, um, this is a very important question and this is a very quintessentially One Health problem as well because food system um, issues are not only about food safety but also about food security. Right now, in as we are all aware that there's a global wheat shortage and there's global... Um, food shortages across um, the world. And that makes food safety and food security even more important. So I'll give an example how food safety can be a big concern and how food safety and food security can tie in. For example, um, one of the big issues in the food systems is the use of antibiotics in raising food animals such as chickens, right? So, um, or even for dairy animals such as cattle. The issue is um, in the Indian setting, for example, animals are raised um, either in very small, small farms with five, 10, 15 animals, which are known as smallholder farms. These farms are often, they are often function in a very small budget with a very small um, footprint, but they need antibiotics to sort of continue productions to protect the health of the animals and ensure that the animals don't fall sick or die. There was a, a, a survey or rather a modeling done by the OECD um, by Ramanan Lakshmi Narayan's group that actually found out that if antibiotics were stopped right away, India would incur a loss of $1.1 billion because um, the food production sector was so dependent on antibiotics to prevent infections in animals. So what happens when you feed um, antibiotics to animals? The antibiotic residues are excreted in the milk. In the chicken's meat, you find antibiotics. In honey, we find antibiotics. 
Um, there was a survey done by a nonprofit that found out of 12 products in the market, um, that is honey uh, products in the market, 11 of them had antibiotic traces in them. So the problem with having trace amounts of antibiotics and in subtherapeutic levels is that they will encourage the self-selection of um, resistant bacteria. And that is something we don't want. Um, that is also a big problem because even if a non-pathogenic bacteria acquires drug resistance, they can transfer the resistance genes by horizontal gene transfer to pathogenic bacteria. Or for example, environmental bacteria such as Acinetobacter baumannii, which are very common in hospital settings, can end up become, becoming hospital acquired infections or nosocomial infections, which affect um, older individuals, people with weaker immune systems and others. So these are, um, these are like uh, the, uh, the ramifications of antibiotics or antimicrobial resistant organisms in food systems. Now, what happens if we say that we cannot use antibiotics in the food production process tomorrow? What happens is that a lot of the food production goes down because if you are to stop antibiotic use, you need to reduce the transmission of infection between animals. And for that to happen, you have to raise fewer animals, which means you have fewer food sources coming in, which becomes a question of food security as well. So um, that's why when I said that um, One Health is a very complex um, approach and it deals with wicked problems, that's exactly what I meant. Um, so yes, food security, food safety, all of these can tie together and um, antibiotics in the food system or antimicrobial resistant organisms or antimicrobial residues in food materials is a very um, good example of food safety risk with respect to the Indian perspective. Thanks sir, for sharing our view. And uh, I must say it's always very interesting from uh, listening it from Dr. Pranav that uh, from the varied examples he gave, he used to give in different settings and this was one of them. So uh, let me take another question from uh, Dr. Shrikant Srirama that how should research be planned and conducted in a one health setting or perspective? Yeah, so um, like any other research project, um, the One Health research begins at the research question. Um, so find out the research question or find out the big problem that you want to solve. What is it that keeps you awake at night? Um, the, the, the diagram that um, Saurav shared, that confusing um, AMR picture, we call it confusogram because it is confusing <laughs> diagram. So um, that is something that keeps me up at night. So find out what is it that keeps you up at night. And um, once you have the research question, the next big challenge in setting up One Health research is finding collaborators. Uh, One Health is a team effort and that makes it better or worse depending on your um, particular issues. Sometimes it is very difficult to find um, collaborators who can provide the kind of support that you need, especially if you're looking at issues related to animal health, environmental health, um, and other forms of um, public health where you don't have as much expertise. Today's world has progressed so much and so much knowledge is being generated every day that it is virtually um, impossible for any one of us to keep pace with everything. So build a good research team that helps answer a good research question. And then the question comes, where do you find the money to do the, do the research? You have the research question, you have the research team, now you need to find the money. Um, the, here's a little bit of hope, the silver lining. There's never enough money to do research. Research monies are always short. Research funding is something that we are always struggling to acquire. But with uh, One Health research question, because it's such a broad-based issue, you can look at a number of um, research organizations or research funding agencies. You can look at food security agencies. You can look at food safety uh, sources for you know, funding your work. You can go beyond human and, and animal health to look at um, alternate routes of funding. So um, that is one silver lining. So you have the research question, you have the research team, and now you have the research funding. Go ahead and do your research. Over to you. 
ओके सो डॉक्टर श्रीकांत आई आई थिंक यू नाउ हैव सम इनसाइट दैट हाउ वी कैन प्रोसीड ऑब्वियसली इट्स नॉट अ कॉमन टॉपिक फ्रॉम आवर पर्सपेक्टिव सो वी नीड टू हैव और वर्क अपॉन एंड लाइक एज सर साइड के वी नीड टू लुक फॉर द कोलेबरेटर्स ओके बिकॉज इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट द ह्यूमन हेल्थ फाइन सो आई थिंक ऑल द क्वेश्चन हैव बीन आंसर्ड डू वी हैव एनी अदर क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर ममता ओके फाइन सो बिफोर कंक्लूडिंग द सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक आई वुड लाइक टू टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ अवर कोऑर्डिनेटिंग टीम एंड वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस माई हार्टफुल ग्रेटिट्यूड फॉर द ऑफिस बियर ऑफ आई ए पी एस एम सो एज टू प्रोवाइड एस दिस ई कनेक्ट प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक वी आर वी आर वी आर हैविंग दिस अकेडमिक फीस्ट सो इन द सीरीज आई वुड लाइक टू हैव फर्स्ट डॉक्टर हरिवंश चौपरा सर प्रेसिडेंट आई ए पी एस एम डॉक्टर पुरुषोत्तम गिरी सर सेक्रेटरी जनरल आई ए पी एस एम डॉक्टर ए एम कादरी सर प्रेसिडेंट इलेक्ट आई ए पी एस एम एंड लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट डॉक्टर सुनीला गर्ग मैम इमीडिएट पास प्रेसिडेंट आई ए पी एस एम आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू थैंक वंस अगेन डॉक्टर प्रणब चटर्जी सर फॉर फाइन ट्यूनिंग दिस प्रेजेंटेशन एंड मेक इट एक्सिलेंट फॉर अवर व्यूवर्स and obviously put the painstaking efforts for our presenters so that they have learned really a lot from you sir thanks and we would like to have more collaboration with you uh, for more wider perspective thanks sir to be here and i would also like to uh, have uh, the uh, dr parag sir dr shadabdi ma'am and uh, dr mamta kehlawat ma'am if they can put their camera on because this report from gujarat barodra dr shatabdi ma'am from kolkata and dr mamta kehlawat ma'am from hyderabad without their diligent efforts this quality execution would not have been possible so i would like to thank you again and you are a uh, core team with us so thanks sir so this is a final goodbye from us but before concluding the session i would like to uh, advise our young public health uh, but the budding experts public health experts to have the subscription of iapsm e connect channel and join the iapsm life membership so to get the most out of it for most out of it this organization and to shape your future in a stream direction thank you everyone and we can the session now